Oh, hey, Ian. So, are you looking forward to the big Q&A on Tuesday? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got some uh, really big things that we're going to reveal in the Q&A. We're really excited. Uh, yeah, great. Um, I was playing on my shaman the other day, and something happened that made me think that it would be really great to have a, a big reveal for the, the Q&A. Uh, hey, what's that? Okay, so uh, this is the big reveal. Um, in the Q&A, we're going to announce the pre-purchase for, for Battle for Azeroth, but we're also going to release the Alpha Client. And all of that amazing stuff that we've been working on so hard here at Blizzard will be revealed to the public for the first time. Oh, uh, yeah, great. That sounds like it would be a, a really great announcement. Uh, yeah, we're really excited. And this is the button that I'm going to press to make it happen. When I press this button in the Q&A, all of that alpha information will go out to the public and they will all see it for the first time. Wow, yeah, that's actually really cool. Uh, yeah, we're really excited. Um, hey, listen, I've got to go and uh, finish a few things. Would you mind holding the button for me while I'm gone? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, great. Uh, except you, you have to promise that you're not going to press it, because if you do, all of the alpha data will be released to the public and it'll ruin the whole big reveal in the Q&A on Tuesday. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. There is much to be done. Well then. It was pretty obvious from the buggy state of 735 when it launched last week that, ready or not, Blizzard clearly needed to get that thing out to make way for other announcements in the coming weeks. And I think most of us were expecting that if such announcements were being planned, the developer Q&A with Ian and Law on Tuesday would probably be the ideal place for any such announcements to be made. So this episode of the Weekly Reset was going to be a kind of continuation from last week, talking more about 735, but with the exception that there would be absolutely no, you know what's. Because after 10 fully formed and beautiful you know what's last week, I kind of think we've all learned a bit of a break from that. So our first story was going to be about the nerf to the recruiter friend experience buff. No. So, you know, maybe it's just as well that in fact all that alpha information just got dumped on us on Friday and we can pick through that instead because yes, alpha is here. And really, seriously, if we're honest, is there anything more exciting for serious WoW players? Is there anything more Christmas morning-like and guaranteed to just fill us with childlike glee than waking up one day to find overwhelming multitudinal ton of new stuff from a new expansion just there and knowing that this is it and at last you can experience Battle for Azeroth in all its glory just as Blizzard intended through data mined broadcast text. Now I'm writing this just hours after the real heroes at WoWhead and MMO Champions started making the treasure trove of new stuff available for us, collating new mount models, string changes, talent updates, instant maps and everything else into something resembling a coherent whole. So all of this information is obviously in a constant state of evolution and change and uncertainness. So before we start unpacking this, I just want to say, please give me alpha access, Blizz. Like, I, I know we're not like a very big channel or whatever, and I know that in the past we have kind of taken the piss out of you like quite a lot, but I promise, seriously, we'll never do another Ian and Law skit hardly like ever again if I get alpha access. Okay, thanks. I, I just needed to say that, thanks. Oh, and also, anything that we say in this episode could change and there are spoilers and blah, 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 blah. Right, let's get down to it and look at the coolest things that we found in the alpha for data so far. Okay, so in the grand scheme of things, these aren't super important. They're not new zones or mechanics or even characters most of the time, but they are undoubtedly one of the most visual and instantly gratifying of any new data mine. And there are some especially exciting examples here already. Number one, obviously, is Bondage Jaina. Possibly my favorite character model ever in the history of the entire game, or in fact, any game. And one we've seen before, of course, but one that we can now play with on the model viewer to our heart's content. So you can say, hey, Jaina, I hate you new pigtail braid thing and watch her get angry and then no only joking really I love it because seriously I love you so much and watch as she gets all bashful and shy oh Jenny you don't have to get shy around me that's about an hour's worth of fun right there plus the added bonus that this should keep us in new belly alar thumbnails for a good 20 videos or so. So, you know, a whole week at least. But we've also got new Gen Greymane looking like he does in the cinematic with his sexy coat and Anduin looking 
kind of like he does in the cinematic too. Okay, actually, you know what, Blizz? I'm sorry to bring this up again, but please can we have another conversation about Anduin's nose here? Because seriously, we've gone from sexy button nose, beautiful Brad Pitt angel child, who's weirdly even more beautiful when he cries, to long, defined, young Gerard Depardieu nose, to this. Seriously, what is this, Blizz? Where did this nose come from? I mean, obviously it comes from the love child of Barbara Streisand and Octavius Caesar. But honestly, what makes Anduin so special that he gets three different noses for three different occasions? I, I just don't understand. But please don't think that I'm criticising though, okay? Because seriously, please give me alpha access, okay? Thanks. And it's not just the old favourites getting reworks. There's Jaina's mum, baddie troll lady, as well as whole and varied new species, like our first glimpses of the new customizable Zandalari troll models, who are, of course, going to be another playable allied race next expansion. And this is something that gives added spice to any new race models found in this data. The fact that we all know Blizzard is now in a position where they could make any of these a new playable allied race at any time. So you don't just look at the weird new standing up snake people and say, wow, they look a bit weird standing up and being all snaky and that, don't they? No, you also think, hmm, I wonder what they'd look like in a T-16 druid set. You don't see Vulpera and just think, wow, they're simultaneously really cute and also the most sinisterly evil looking things I've ever seen with their tiny evil eyes. You think, I wonder what hunter pet my Vulpera and Hunter will start with when I make my Vulpera and Hunter. You don't just see the new bear and skinny Kultir and human models and think, man, that is awesome. I love how many different body types there are. You you think, hey, how come Asmongol gets his own in-game NPC? I want an in-game NPC, this is so unfair. Oh, okay, I've got one. Okay, never mind, carry on. Mounts. Now, we're obviously going to do a full video on all the new mounts in the alpha because, you know, we're not idiots. That's video gold right there. But we'll do that once there are actually models for them all because there are more getting found and shared even as I record this. But we have some excellent ones to keep us going in the meantime. Everyone thought this was the alliance mount for people who bought the Battle for Azeroth Collector's Edition, the Seabraid Stallion. And it's easy to see why. It's a horse, which is somehow a combination of Anduin and Jaina and Greymane all at once, which is actually really impressive when you think about it. Don't get too excited though, because we think this is probably Anduin's horse, because it's covered in lions. And what's Anduin's favorite thing? Yes, crying, but after that, lions, so it makes sense. So far, we don't have the actual Seabraid Stallion model yet. Same for the Horde version, the Gilded Ravasaur. There are plenty of gilded looking raptors, which certainly are going to be mounts, but nothing we can say for certain is the Collector's Edition reward just yet. In the meantime, you'll just have to do with literally every dinosaur dream you've ever had coming true. Not only do we have the Zandalari flight and travel forms, it appears froth in general is going to be more chock full of dinosaurs than the concrete floor of a dinosaur serial killer's basement. Because yes, there are sauropod mounts. Big, hulking, majestic sauropod mounts that look Look like they'll probably be smaller than you want them to be when you actually mount them because blizzard pussies. You can see the seats at the side where the vendors will sit because this is clearly like the froth version of the Grand Expedition Yak. Yes, there are pterosaur mounts. Yes, there is an armored zombie T-Rex. Sorry, I'm not sure if you heard that right. There is an armored zombie T-Rex. It's like a T-Rex, but it's a zombie T-Rex and it's armored. Actually, this one might not be a player mount either because blizzard pussies, but there's also the bat loa. There's all manner of hyena there are PvP proto drakes and basilisks. There's the goblin hovercraft, Wizard of Oz monkey bat pretties, and please let these be mounts. There's squigs, a Mimiron's head but with guns on it. There's the tantalizingly named hive mind, and guys, there's frog mounts. But here's the thing the frog mounts aren't even the most ridiculous thing here because, ladies and gentlemen, there are bee mounts. Blizzard, I just want to thank you. In one alpha dump, you've fulfilled not just all my Jurassic Park fantasies, okay, nearly all of my Jurassic Park fantasies, but now my Honey, I Shrunk the Kids fantasies too. That's before I even think about all the not the bees fun we're gonna have with these. Oh, and also, please let me into the alpha blizz. I'm sorry when I called you pussies just then. I didn't mean it, please. Not the bees! There's been a whole load of broadcast text and scenario information to unravel, and that's exactly the kind of work I'm going to leave to someone else. But there's a couple of things in there which are really interesting. Namely, what I'm assuming are pre-patched scenarios for the Horde and Alliance, because they seem to tell a Broken Shore-style story that is going to lead directly into the action of the next expansion. So we have, in 
probably the wrong order, Stormwind Extraction, a single player scenario where Horde players go deep behind enemy lines into Stormwind to rescue Saurfang from the keep and also end up freeing one Zul in the process. We have the Siege of Lordaeron and the Fall of Lordaeron, which appear to be multiplayer Alliance and Horde versions of the same event, maybe played out at the same time like the Broken Shore was. The Horde version of this sees Sylvanas' forces losing the Undercity, despite their Azurite war machines, but in the meantime chuck a load of blight at the Alliance, which you'd think is why they can't make Lordaeron a new capital city later on. The Alliance version sees us breaching the walls of the former human stronghold, chasing off Sylvanas, and also even more exciting than that, this would appear to be when we reunite with Jaina for the first time. There's also scenarios involving the Zandalari fleet and all sorts, but we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks as it all becomes clearer. As always, new content means new music. We don't have the Battle for Azeroth title screen yet, and hearing the new take on that famous opening is always a big moment in the progress of a new expansion. But we do have pieces named after nearly all the main zones and initial dungeons, and obviously it's all great. There's creepy troll music, jaunty seafaring ditties, and we're just going to go ahead and play some of it under the rest of this episode if that's okay. We've also got new pets and critters that, let's be honest, will probably be pets at some point. And you know me, I usually don't get too excited about pets, but it's not every day you get stupid cute chickens and budgies and tortoises and pigs and piglets and pigman. Okay, maybe not pigman. And cats! And even bigger, fluffier cat. Oh god, even bigger, fluffier cats! And not to mention this little guy. Hi, little guy. You look like a fun... No. Nah. There are the embryonic start of class changes in the data too, hot on the heel of Blizzard's blue post outlining their intended direction for player classes in Battle for Azeroth, we had changes that we definitely aren't going to get into any detail here, because this is one of those things that really is going to change constantly until launch. And when we do talk about it, it deserves to be talked about properly and in detail. And most of these changes aren't really specific anyway, it's mostly coefficient tweaks, generally taking the power of everything down. Including artifact traits, and we know artifacts aren't going to be a thing next expansion, so for me this looks like preparing for a stat squish which might well be coming sooner rather than later. And on the subject of artifacts, could we be in line for one last artifact appearance? Legion's Bane is a new achievement where completing the Council's Challenge questline gives you a new artifact skin. Now, okay, this could be referring to the already existing Mage Tower challenges, I suppose, and Ian did say in a previous Q&A that they weren't planning on adding any more artifact appearances after the Mage Tower, but the name Legion's Bane does seem to suggest an end of the expansion type thing, and it would make sense for us to get kind of like a depleted or overloaded appearance to show how our weapons are now dangerous and unstable before we put them away for BFA. I also really like the word challenge in that title because that sounds like a Mage Tower challenge and I love the Mage Tower challenge so sign me up. It's likely that I'm being a little bit too optimistic here but rest assured I'll be watching this one very closely. Oh, there's also a mention of something that sounds quite a lot like Order Hall missions too but uh, no, no, let's not go there today, okay? So, on a scale of one to whatever, how excited are you? Whatever. Whatever. Assuming that whatever, <laughs> whatever. is like the highest point of that scale, because <laughs> actually saying I'm like whatever excited doesn't sound that excited, but actually I'm very, very excited. Yeah. I'm whatever. Whatever. Is that whatever? Is yeah. That wh what? Um, yeah, I'm incredibly yeah. excited. Are you excited? I'm super excited. I'm also whatever. It's really weird because it is like a new game. Mm -hmm. It is like a new expansion. But at the same time, you are kind of ruining it for yourself when the new game and new expansion yeah, does happen. It's I very, know that very strange. Feel. Yeah, I know um, that but feel. <laughs> still really excited. And Blizz, still please give us alpha access. Can't promise I, can, oh, I, yeah. I can't promise to use that alpha access for anything other than just standing <laughs> next to Jaina <laughs> and like just basically clicking Jaina. on her, just Repeat. taking screenshots <laughs> yeah. from every possible angle, yeah, just selfies. sending them to Bell. And obviously, no one is actually playing the alpha yet. No. Maybe. That will come live uh, during the Q&A on oh. Tuesday. Um, lots of us would expect it. Um, I'd imagine certainly the pre-purchase mm -hmm. uh, is going to be made available on Tuesday. I, mm -hmm. I kind of feel that's what all this is for. Will Allied Races be available when pre-purchase is made available? I'm still going to say no. Oh, you I'm know. I'm holding out. I'm it's holding you out versus Mr. Games Master Reviews. I know, it's me versus the world. <laughs> because I know, I know that I said it once before, and now I have to stick to it. Yeah. Even though part of me actually thinks they're coming. And there's still stuff like being released as we speak. Mm -hmm. You know, there's stuff just coming up on our screen over there, which is making this video more and more irrelevant the longer we take to record it. <laughs> just um, watching things yeah. scroll by in the background be like, oh. But this morning, there was new PvP armor sets, Warfront yeah. armor sets. That 
that that's clearly gonna be like the main reward from Warfronts oh boy. is uh, transmog sets. But they are good transmog sets, and there I are do three love good tiers, set. three tiers of Ooh. rewards. And the horde ones, I, I'll put some photos on the screen now. But they're absolutely ridiculous. They are the biggest, spikiest shoulder pads you've ever seen in your life. Well, now at tier one. <laughs> and then at tier three, it's like there's literally nothing else on screen but shoulder pads I love and that. spike. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. You're going to like them. You're going to like them. I love it. I feel like eventually Warcraft armor, and I think it's well on its way there, is just going to be like that meme of... Um, of Kylie Ren from Star Wars. Like, <laughs> um, and there's like new profession stuff, which we didn't have time to get into here. Tailoring's gonna be the new prof the profession that you wanna do, as always, because they got bags, mate. They got 32 slot bags. They can make a hot air balloon pet. Stop it. A hot air balloon pet. And when I can saw that, it? I thought they could make a hot air balloon uh... that they could ride in, and that'd be the best thing ever, but apparently it's just a pet. Can you put your other pets in the hot air balloon pet? Blizz. You heard her. Just saying. You heard her. Just saying. One last thing before we go, and that is our eagerly awaited, by a very, very specific corner of the internet, art competition. Oh, You're tell excited. me more. I, I will, I will, um, if I can remember. Yes, we trailed this last week. We would like to invite you to enter our art competition mm. um, because, do you see this blank wall here? It's so blank. That everyone always complains about. Well, we don't like it either. And we would like a beautiful work of art here, we're going to move this uh, silver play button down a bit so everyone can see it, and we're going to have the work of art just above it, but it'll be in full view of this camera the whole time. Mm -hmm. So we would like you to create a work of art about anything you like. It can be anything. You know, you know what we like? It's probably got more chance of winning if it's at least slightly Warcraft or Taliesin and Nevertale themed, and if it's a little bit quirky. Yeah. Because I don't even know what that means. It could, it, it could literally be anything. It could be Warcraft, it could be us, it could be a combination of us and Warcraft, yeah. it could be Cadgar. it could be... As like an old style portrait. Yeah, like or a... Or it could be like one of those old travel posters yeah. uh, of like a famous uh, Warcraft location. That's really cool. Something like really standout-ish or just whatever kind of thing you usually produce that you mm -hmm. know you're good at and that you feel comfortable with. That's really cool as well because yeah. I don't know the answer to this question. I'm looking forward to people answering this question by sending us their entries. Yeah, we don't there, know what we there want. There are criteria. It has to fit into this IKEA 30 by 40 centimeter frame because that's the size we've worked out is going to be the best yeah. for here. 30 by 40 centimeters. It has to be sent to Taliesin and Evertel at gmail.com mm -hmm. with the title Art Competition. Art competition. The word art, then a space, and the word competition, if it doesn't have that title, it will not be entered in the competition because we won't see it. It'll, It'll go into the spam fair. folder with all of the really weird gold selling companies trying to get us to advertise them on our channel. Which, yeah. um, And it has to be in by 11.59 on February the 10th, yes. 2018. So that's two weeks, which isn't loads. No. And the prize is fantastic exposure. No, the prize is, well, there is well, that, that, obviously. That's not really a prize. Um, the prize is 100 US dollars. 100 USD. Now, we are fully aware that that's not enough for... Um, uh, your time. And for your, your time and for, for, for your skills. And particularly if you happen to be a professional freelance artist, it means that uh, you'll need a PayPal account for us to pay you. Mm -hmm. You'll need to be able to uh, either supply us with a high res download of the artwork that we can mm -hmm. print off ourselves and have there. Or if you prefer, you have to be willing to supply us with a print yes. of your artwork. Either way. Ooh, those are like the terms and conditions. And we reserve the right to choose any winner we like just because we like it. Uh, exactly. We are the judges of this competition <laughs> and that will be the winner. We don't know what we, we want here. We have no idea. Show us what we, we have. Want. We're creatively drained. Yeah. We have no thoughts. As you might have been able to Our tell from the last mush. year's worth of videos yeah. that we made, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and that is just about it for yeah. us. But thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to help these videos happen. Guys, thank you. Without you, there'd be a lot less Tadiesa and Nevertel. If you didn't like the video, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is Dark Mech. Is it? No. Oh. My name is Taliesin. And I'm Evertel. Until next time. Cheerio.